Big game coming up on ACC Network. Top 20 matchup just about five minutes away. NC State and North Carolina going head to head. Elisa Kunain averaging about 13 and 7 so far this season. Meanwhile, Deja Kelly, she's the number three scorer right now in the ACC, just over 17 points per game. We'll see what she's able to do as these two teams meet up. And we welcome in Chelsea Gray, Kelly Gramlich, and Coach Muffet McGraw. I'm Kelsey Riggs here with you for the next five minutes or so. Tonight on Nothing But Net, but first, we've got a big game to get to. Reina Perez and NC State getting ready for a, a top 20 showdown with North Carolina there at Reynolds Coliseum. We will see what she is able to do. And you take a look at the teams that have beaten ranked teams so far this season. We've talked a lot about NC State, their schedule, the success they've had, as well as Louisville, the one team that is not on that list with the ranked win so far this season is North Carolina. And statistically, Chelsea, North Carolina and NC State look pretty similar so far this season, but the opponents have been different. What do you expect from North Carolina in tonight's game, Chelsea? I know North Carolina is going to put an emphasis on Elisa Kunain. Who will match up with her? How does UNC guard the paint? For me, my point guard mind, my offense will be a key component. Push the tempo in a controlled manner, but Kunain put Kunain in ball screens, put her in pin downs, bring her out of the paint, make her expense some energy on the defensive end so when she goes down to the paint offensively you know she sees somebody she sees some pressure but I think that's going to be a key for North Carolina and they're going to have to do something because Janelle Bailey has kind of owned Kune in the last three years she's gone who is North Carolina going to have that's going to be able to lean on Kune be physical with her keep her off the block I don't think they have anybody that can handle her she's going to have a field day inside if NC State looks in they're going to score one of the things I'm looking at in this game, guys, is NC State and how they shoot the three. Chelsea thinks with her point guard mind, I think with my shooter mind. And this NC State team is third in the country in three-point percentage. UNC has to guard the three, especially in transition. That's where the pack loves to get good looks. And when you're at home, you guys know, and you hit a couple threes early, the crowd is electric. So I think that's very important for UNC to guard that. And then offensive rebounds is a big thing that UNC does. So NC State has to make sure that they block out some of those smaller players that can get O boards, like in a Alyssa Usby, who's third in the league in rebounding. First time that these two teams have matched up as ranked opponents since February of 2014. They have traded blows back and forth the last seven times they've played. We will see what happens today. We will be back with you at the half, at the half but right now we send you out to Pam Ward and Stephanie White at Reynolds Coliseum. Thank you, Kelsey. What a game this should be. Courtney Banghart's team is undefeated. One of three unbeaten teams left in the U.S. Taking on Elisa Kunain. Muffet McGraw says they can't stop her. Kunain, the preseason player of the year in the ACC. As we welcome you to the ACC Network and sold out Reynolds Coliseum. This great rivalry now amped up to another level with unbeaten Carolina coming in to take on the Wolfpack, who are number five in the country. Can't wait. Pam Ward along with Stephanie White, former Wade Trophy winner and national champion at Purdue. Big test coming up here for North Carolina. Yes, they're unbeaten, but State is the first ranked team they've played all season. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Both exceptional offensive teams. We should see the ball going through the net all night long. If you're North Carolina, though, you don't want to trade twos for threes, so you really have to do a good job of defending that three-point line. Now, one thing that NC State fans would like to see is the Jakia Brown-Turner of last season. Her numbers are down a bit this year. Yeah, she was a first-team All-ACC player a year ago, and I really expected her to take her game to another level. Right now, she's just blending in on the offensive end of the floor. For NC State to do what they want to do and go to a Final final Four, Jakia Brown-Turner has to stand out. She has to be more effective on the offensive end. Yes, uh, NC State is a very deep team, but they are looking for another score. They hope Brown-Turner can provide that. Meanwhile, who would have thought North Carolina would be unbeaten now as we head into the new year? The Tar Heels were picked seventh, yes, seventh in the 15-team ACC in the preseason poll. Best start in over a decade, now at 13-0 for this team. And their highest ranking since 2016, first time since 2014, their playing state when both right. teams are ranked. And Steph Courtney Banghart's offense has got it going. 
Uh, she really does. I mean, they're pushing pace, they're pushing tempo, they're scoring a lot, and their defense has been pretty good too. But this really is their first true test on the road in a rivalry game against a ranked opponent. In the last couple of years, they have split their season series, and we are underway. NC State wearing their home whites, North Carolina in there, of course. Light blue, Elisa Kunane going to be a big factor for State. Kelly Jones back in the lineup after missing the last game, still nursing a knee that had that she had surgery on back in April. Look at the North Carolina starting lineup. Four sophomores and Carly Littlefield, who is a grad transfer from Princeton, where she played for a couple of years when Banghart was the head coach. Good defense by Kunane, gets the block. And North Carolina going right at Elisa Kunane inside, trying to challenge her to defend. Starting five for NC State. Crutchfield, one of the best defenders in the league, and there's Kunane's first bucket. Well, we heard Muffet McGraw talk about it. You cannot stop her one-on-one. -on -one. Who's going to be able to contain her inside? And if you're NC State, start the game by feeding her to basketball. Absolutely. Kunane leading this team in both scoring and rebounding. And a foul out on the perimeter. Looks like they're going to get Crutchfield for it. Westmore has done a tremendous job now in his ninth season. Coach of the year last year, but a... An, Early exit, losing as a number one seed in the Sweet 16. And he's, you know, he's looking forward to this, but he, he said, to be honest with you, I liked it back in the day when we were the, the only ones on top. Now Duke and North Carolina both back in the top 20. Of course he would, right? He would like it like that. But I'll tell you what, this is great for women's basketball. This is a great for every fan in the triangle. Just to re-energize, there are six teams in the ACC in the top 20. NC State uh, at number five, and boy, Louisville just had, shall we say, a very convincing win as they took care of Pitt. Louisville number three in the polls this week. NC State looking into Kunane, and now with three off the mark, and Carolina is a team that loves to score in transition. There is a double dribble. It gets the ball back to the Wolf Pack. Well, Pam, you mentioned that they like to score in transition. They turn people over. They get 11 steals a ball game, but also long shots, long rebounds. We want to keep an eye on that. If NC State is not making the three-point shots, it leads to long rebounds. That can lead to easy runouts. That's a three, no rebound on that one. Buried by Brown Turner, so maybe she, she can get going. You're right. I mean, it's exactly what NC State needs. Chelsea Gray was talking about uh, putting Kunane defensively in the two-man game, but now offensively she's in the two-man game. And how do you match up? You can't go under a team that leads the league in three-point field goal percentage. And we see the first six games of 11 points per game and just under seven in her. Or since then, Kunane getting the rebound. NC State with the decisive height advantage, but Courtney Banghart says, yep, they got size, but we have great speed and spacing, so it's going to be interesting to see how the contrasting si uh, styles play out tonight. Took two meetings. They will play January the 30th back in Chapel Hill, about a half hour apart. Shot clock is dying. Perez for the three. Well, you really have to run out with a hand up. I mean, right now, there's just too much open space for NC State. They are a great three-point shooting team. They're playing at home. Have to be a little bit more disruptive and run them off that line. Already buried a couple of threes. These are the two top scoring teams in the ACC. North Carolina leading the nation in several categories, or at least in the top 10 in offensive categories. Shot off the mark by Usby, a very talented sophomore from Rochester, Minnesota. I really like that action with Usby on the elbow, playing in a two-man game, a post-to-post kind of action. 
She's really good in the middle of the floor. Perez with the miss. Rebound taken down by Anya Poole at 6-2. She is the only, or is the tallest starter, excuse me. She and us be the only starters over six feet for the heels. Asia Keller coming off the game of her life. 31 points, a new career high against Clemson the last time they played. Missed the shot. Now Turner can't get the roll, but Kunane got one off. Crutchfield left open. Well, and NC State's mm -hmm. doing it on the offensive glass. When well, Westmore talked to us about his concerns about North Carolina's offensive rebounding, his team getting after it on the glass. And now a two on one, but the shot off by Carly Littlefield. Usby takes steps. And the sold out crowd here in Raleigh liking what they're seeing so far. They're pitching a shutout. Yeah, Pam, and for Courtney Banghart, one of your concerns has to be your young, inexperienced team going on the road in a tough environment. We're, you know, we're talking about young players who didn't play in front of fans, even experienced players like Carly Littlefield who didn't play last year at, at Princeton. So now they're going into this environment against a veteran team. How can they handle that? Can they handle this first wave? And it is such a loud gym, too. Compact, seats about 5,000 people. Kunane this time getting it done in the paint. And it's 10-0. Littlefield running the point. Again, the only non-sophomore starter for this team. NC State's defense has been stout so far. Kelly trying to force matters, and that is one of the toughest shots you're ever going to want to see. That was a heck of a move, an even better finish. Leading this team in scoring, Kelly at just under 18 points per game. Finally gets the first bucket five minutes in. Brown Turner being aggressive. Yeah, I really like that. You know, Pam, her, her leap, her athleticism, being a lefty, I mean, lefties are hard to guard anyway, but she's a player who needs to use her skill set a little bit more assertively, just like that. Six foot tall wing out of Oxon Hill, Maryland, outside of Washington, D.C., has five points so far. Littlefield, good help from Kunane. NC State, Westmore, gotta like this start. His team is up 10 as we hit our first time out. NC State is a matchup nightmare. They have such balance inside and outside, establishing Kunane early, knocking down threes. You can't go under screens against this team. They can't have that much space. But who do you defend? You have to pick your poison. But if you're defending this team, you cannot allow them to do both. And I am loving the aggressiveness that Jakia Brown-Turner is playing with early in this ballgame. Yep, got five points already. And there you see North Carolina with two more turnovers than made field goals. Westmore's team hitting the offensive glass. They've scored five points, by the way, off of those three North Carolina turnovers. And they are off to a terrific start. But these two teams have played each other rather closely. This is Courtney Banghart's th uh, third season in charge, and she's 2-2 two and two against NC State, even though NC State has been a powerhouse the last few seasons. Recent history, there you see they've been able to come out, and even though they've been in the uh, top 18 and top 10 three times, coming away with victories. Banghart coming over after a terrific career at Princeton. And she seemed to get them into the NCAA tournament every single season. Great fit for her in Chapel Hill. Usby with the miss. Both of these coaches talked to us about the matchups last season, and you know, really it was as simple as whichever team made shots is the team that won the ball game. And that sounds like that is obvious, but you can get good looks. You know, you play at a very high level. You get good looks. You've coached a high level, and sometimes they just don't go in. No, oh, you're, you're right. And, you know, defensive game plans, you know, offensive game plans, and sometimes, especially in rivalry games, those just go out the window. It's just whichever players make plays. Anya Poole just picked up her first foul. Number 31 in blue. Important for her to stay out there to try to keep Kunane at least a little bit under wraps. Kunane tried to save it, but the ball goes over to the heels. 
Jacqueline, I don't know if Kunane meant to throw that ball out of bounds or not, but that was a smart play if she did, because you do not right. want to give live ball to, to the Tar Heels. They will push in transition and make you pay. And the Hodgson, who is, uh, Hodgson is the sixth player for this team, came in, fired up a three, couldn't get it, and Kunane had it knocked out of her hands. The ball stays with NC State. Hodgson is a grad transfer from William & Mary. And uh, Coach Banghart talked about how much Hodgson and Littlefield, the grad transfers, have really come in, brought experience, brought leadership, and they're blending well with all of their sophomores. Yeah, she spoke so highly of their mentality, their toughness, their competitiveness, their resilience, and how grateful they are to have an opportunity to play in a Power Five conference. And they're leading this young core by example every day. Yeah, it seems to be a great mixture. She talks about how connected they are, but they're up against it. Boy, Kunane, show us some more from your arsenal as Elisa Kunane hits the three. Now four of ten on the season from distance and gets a rebound. And this right here has to be your concern if you're Courtney Banghart. They're, you know NC State's going to make a run. They're excited. It's a great environment. Can you settle in? Can you start to answer? Can you chip away, get defensive stops, and get some scores? Jada Boyd, last year's co sixth player of the year with NC State, gets the bucket. This NC State team has a lot of firepower off the bench, and we have not even seen Diamond Johnson. That, and now she is on the floor, pardon me, number zero in white, but boy, uh, Alyssa Kinane off to a great start. Yeah, establish her inside early. She's playing with a lot of confidence. You cannot back that far up. She has the ability to stretch the D. She doesn't show it very often. And then Jada Boyd going to work inside. This is an experienced team. This is a deep team. You know, everybody came back using their COVID year. This is a very focused NC State basketball team. And yeah, Diamond Johnson not just on the floor, but has picked up two quick fouls for the Wolfpack. And she has already been subbed out, and Kunane just can't miss. Pam, this is, this is what you want to see from Lisa Kunane every night. In dominance, wanting the basketball, being a, an aggressive scorer, not just waiting for it to happen, but making it happen. Yeah, certainly has the talent to do that, but we have seen her be inconsistent, especially when she gets into foul trouble. She's off to a tremendous start this evening. Perez on the runner. NC State down 16, their biggest deficit of the season. Or oh, sorry, North Carolina down 16, their biggest deficit. Well, and, and, and this is what you would expect from, from NC State. A, a rivalry matchup, a sold out crowd. Westmore has not been pleased with how his team has been playing. He has challenged them, and right now they have accepted that challenge. Yeah, they certainly have coming out. That play notwithstanding, a rare turnover. Here's Deja Kelly, gets the basket. Deja Kelly. Kelly has all, or excuse me, four of North Carolina's seven points. Busby has also scored. Perez stuck her arm out and they got her for it. Karen Prieto, Jules Gallin, and Mark Resch, our officials this evening in Raleigh. Melissa Usby, who is really a terrific player, very lightly recruited, coming out of Lords High School in Rochester, Minnesota, and kind of plays with a chip on her shoulder that Courtney Banghart absolutely loves. Well, I love watching that kid on film. I think, you know, she's a, a, a player who stands out because of her motor. She stands out because of her skill set. And NC State continuing to make it rain from three. Shot clock is off. NC State has hit four threes already. And they are pummeling the heels. Terrific block. And a great ending to almost a perfect quarter for the Wolfpack. Reina Perez with a couple of threes. No, she's been terrific. She's controlled tempo. She's knocked down big shots, including this one right here.
NC State up big early on Carolina. They have been making it rain from three. You can't go under on an on-ball screen against this team. They lead the ACC in three-point field goal percentage. Alisa Kunain showed that she has the range as well. If you're North Carolina, you have to find a way to close the gap, run this team off of the three-point line, and chip away at this deficit. Yeah, it was a very impressive first quarter, as the uh, score indicates. Pam Ward along with Steph White. As North Carolina coming in, Arizona and Colorado are the other two unbeaten teams left in the country. And right now, NC State is uh, very close. It's 10 minutes in, 30 minutes to go of sending North Carolina to its first defeat of the season. So a lot of basketball left to go. But boy, Steph, you look at the stats, and it's overwhelming in favor of North Carolina State. Yeah, it is. Kunain, or Kunain, excuse me, on herself has more points, field goals, and rebounds than Carolina has as a team. Yeah, and if you're Courtney Banghart, you have to have had that break, that opportunity to say, just settle down. Like, we have to settle in. We're not going to get it all back at once. Let's get back to doing what we do best. Let's push tempo. Let's lock in defensively. playing by far the best team they have ever they have played this season and certainly in the loudest gym count that bucket well again in transition is where they excel you have to pick up the ball a little higher than that Deja Kelly does such a good job of attacking the paint finishing the play First foul on Kunain, who gets a break. She only played 14 minutes in their last game against Clemson. And Wes Moore kind of, he says that's all on him. He had, he was the only coach there. The other assistants, the, the assistants, part me, were in, in protocol. And he wanted to get Kunain some more minutes. And there you see her numbers, very impressive for Kunain. Well, Pam, I can't imagine having a game where you don't have one assistant coach on the bench. I mean, there's so many things that happen throughout the course of a game that you need help with as a, as a head coach. And you know, he just lost track of the time. Well, the one way that Carolina could get back into this game is uh, in transition, but Usby was called for the charge. Yeah, looking to get out, and Diamond Johnson just getting her feet set, beating Usby to the spot and taking the charge. That's two offensive fouls NC State's taken already. Diamond Johnson, a dynamic player, picked up a couple of fouls in just two minutes back in the first quarter. But she is the transfer from Rutgers, where she was on the all-freshman team and, and gives them such, not just not a spark off the bench. He calls her a bonfire. Yes. Small player, the fans here in Raleigh absolutely adore Diamond Johnson, who is fine with being the sixth player on this very deep and talented team as Boyd hits a shot. And Carolina answers. You're not going to be able to trade buckets, though. You know, at, at this point, you got to find ways to get stops if you're Carolina and, and, and really chip away at this lead. But I've been very impressed with NC State's energy level. We've seen them quite a few times already this season. Their energy level, their attention to detail, their sense of urgency, which Westmore talked to us about, is the highest that I have seen it thus far. Yes. Yes, so far, so good for them. Hobby, who came in for Kunain, throws up a three. Now one of nine from distance on the season. Deja Kelly has nine of North Carolina's points. Now they're coming up with the rebound. So no Kunain on the floor, a little bit different look. Boyd with the drive, and that's what Camille Hobby will do for you. Gets the offensive rebound, but couldn't convert. The smallest player on the floor, Johnson chased it down. And Crutchfield saved that possession by meeting that pass. Johnson off the back rim. Great hustle by Boyd. And she took steps as she ran in to Usby. Lindsay State is just really active on the offensive glass. And that time didn't get an, an another offensive possession. But again, if you're West Moore, you don't want the live ball turnovers. We can see the rebounding numbers. We don't want the live ball turnovers because that is what NC State, or North Carolina, excuse me, really thrives on. 
So dead ball turnovers, take it out of bounds, take the travel so we can get our defense set. Well, 10 offensive rebounds, but only three second chance points for NC State. Good look at a three, well short, and then a rebound and a foul called. Banghart trying to figure some things out. She knew that this would be a, a tough go. Yeah, I mean, she talked to us about the fact that there's not pressure on us. We, we, we are going in you know, to the home arena of, 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 a, of a great ranked opponent. It's a rivalry matchup, but this game has to be used as a measuring stick. Hobby inside, able to get the bucket. And this is where, Pam, we talked early about, about picking your poison. There is, as Hodgson knocks down a three, there's not one person who can match up with the NC State bigs if you're North Carolina. You graduated your post players. Janelle Bailey's not here anymore. So what do you do? Do you put all of your resources inside, or do you guard the three-point line? But they have to find one of them. And right now, I would run NC State off the three-point line. As Elia was able to get the block on the other end, a 6'4 sophomore from Arizona. It gives them some height off the bench. Just under six minutes to go in the second quarter is a uh, Zalea. We're going to have a review as Karen Prado goes over to the monitor. We are reviewing a possible unobserved intentional foul. We'll see what happened here as Hobby makes a move. Oh, it looks like, yeah, she caught Zelaya in the nose or forehead. But just as she was going to make the move, got her right there. So Prieto along with over there, part me looking at the uh, monitor to see if that foul should be upgraded on Camille Hobby. And that's a tough one. I mean, it's contact to the head, it's contact to the face, but at the same time, it's a post player making a post move. There, there wasn't anything egregious. And that's that's that. This is a tough call. If it is considered a basketball move, it should not be upgraded. Now, and Ryan, to, to me, it looks like a basketball play. I mean, it looks like the post moves that your post players go through every day in practice. There's no extension or swinging of the elbow. The ball comes above her head. You can see, gosh, yes, her right to... Uh, Call confirmed, no foul on the play. We'll be back to Raleigh. Welcome back to Raleigh, where Westmore's team is out to an impressive 28 to 15 lead over North Carolina. Their only two losses came to number one South Carolina in a game that we did, Georgia, with that, a miracle shot to send it into overtime, winning in Raleigh. And uh, this is a team, Steph, that uh, has, uh, and you mentioned it, you referenced it early in the game, that Westmore has not always been happy with what, what he's seen, but I would say so far so good tonight. Yeah, I mean, he used the word urgency in our meeting with us multiple times. He wanted to see more of a sense of urgency, particularly on the defensive end of the floor. I think his team has come out and they've established that urgency. They've been playing with great energy. Now they have to maintain that energy. Led by as many as 16 in this game. The lead now is 13. Brown Turner! 
Pam, she can do that every time down the floor. Mm -hmm. you know, she, she settles oftentimes for just shooting the three-point shot, but she is so good at getting into, getting into the paint, of getting into the rim, using her size just like that to shoot over smaller defenders. And her scoring got about five points per game from last year, where she was a unanimous first team on ACC selection, but came out aggressive in this game. Uh, another tipped ball. Yeah, and she's the key to me. She, she's a, another perimeter scorer who can also get to the rim. I think she can get to the foul line a little bit more. But again, she's poised. She's patient. She uses her length and size to shoot over a smaller defender. Yeah, how about that? This is her 14th game of the season, and she's only been the line or shot eight free throws all season. And, and you look at a player like her who has the length and athleticism on the on the perimeter to play at all three levels, and the skill set to play at all three levels. And, and for her to continue to de develop and this team to continue to chase Final Four aspirations, she's got to do that. A junior and had a double-double this season in the big win against Maryland. SP was just called for her second foul. She has been kept very quiet. Just three points for her, a couple of fouls. For a player that was the first player that Wes Moore, when we were talking to him about North Carolina, that was the first player that he named as far as being concerned. Yeah, he talked about last year her just beating his team up and down the floor and getting layups in transition. I mean, she, she's a tough player. and Tasha Kelly continues to light it up. She has been the sole source of offense for Carolina. Yeah, coming off that career high 31 against Clemson in which she had 18 in the first half. She's got 12, so two thirds of their scoring already. Deepman close, and I'm trying to miss that time. And wide open on the wing, that goes out for Kennedy, Todd Williams, Usby, there's some of the hustle. A good look at a shot for Hodgson, but it would not go in. Kanane's back in the game. Look out. Doubled quickly out to Crutchfield. Got it. And again, this is where you pick your poison. You send two to Kanane. She is a very willing and good passer. Gets it out to the three-point line. Yeah, that's something that is sometimes overlooked, right? If you have a post player that can get out of double teams like that and make the quality pass, there's a bucket. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And it's experience, it's poise, it's understanding where your teammates are going to be, utilizes a pivot foot, steps out, finds Crutchfield, and she knocks it down. Yeah, that's something that Coach Moore has worked on with Elisa Kunane, who is a senior, does have one year of eligibility remaining, but she's uh, high on a lot of people's mock draft boards in the WNBA, should she decide to come out. Well, and I'll tell you, if she steps out and continues to knock down threes, she's going to rise in, in that draft board stock right now because just, you know, from a physicality standpoint against the bigs she'll match up with, it would be a tough going. Had a good look on that one, but missed it. Kayla Jones keeps things alive, but then steps taken by Perez, gets the ball back over to the Tar Heels. Banghart's team shooting just 30% so far in this game. Only three Tar Heels have scored. And remember, this is a team that is one of the most high scoring teams in the country. First game against a ranked team. Kelly called for the offensive foul. Kai Crutchfield's a great defender, and she drew that charge. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, Kai Crutchfield is a tremendous defender. It takes great pride. And you can just see the extension of the arm right there. And Crutchfield does a good job of selling it. Yeah, nice call out there on the perimeter. As we approach three minutes to go in the first half. NC State's only scored nine points in this quarter, actually being outscored by Carolina. Mary Jones, she really is. Maybe the, the heartbeat of this team. You're right, the glue. She, she's the one who, her, her motor, her IQ, her understanding and experience. There's the Alyssa Usby that is 
stricken fear into many an opponent as she knocks down the three. And this is what you have to do if you're Carolina, just chip away. You, know, you have to find ways to put the ball in the bucket, find ways to build confidence, get stops. Get stops, and if, if North Carolina State keeps shooting the ball like this, though, oh my goodness. That is Kayla Jones, again, missed the last game against Clemson as they rested her. She's coming back from knee surgery. Crutchfield again on defense, that time with the block. Oh, wow, that was Todd Williams getting good position and then blowing the shot. Yeah, what a good read by Todd Williams. Just didn't finish. Jermaine hanging out at the three-point line right now. She heard you. Yep, post up there. Then she kicked it right back out. And it did not go in. Sukune is not really going to be somebody who's going to want to bang and battle down, down low. Now, when you, you think the about the player, and, and you think about the next level and the bigs that are, I mean, the Sylvia Fowles, the Brittany Grinders. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the, the more often and, and confident and comfortable she gets with stretching the defense, the higher her draft stock's going to go. I'm trying to think about it, now pulls it. Kunane, they're going to call a foul on Usby for the aggressive box out, and that is three on Usby. Very crucial player, leading rebounder on this team. Has three personals and six points. Yeah, Usby's a player who, who's impact on the ball game goes beyond just the stat sheet with her motor, with her intensity. The name the line, we have good women's basketball coming your way Sunday. How about a quadruple header, number five NC State in South Bend to take on Notre Dame at two Eastern. We'll have that one. Quadruple header starts at noon Eastern on the ACC Network and on the app. Game uh, among the uh, six teams in the top 20 in the ACC. Looking forward to that matchup and looking forward to seeing Olivia Miles. Oh, yeah. Leading the country in assists. Not bad. Yes, not bad. Citron, Maddie Westbell, a lot of talent. There's the state's defense. Stout, shot clock dying, and that is a charge. Oh, Todd Williams just stuck her head down and was going to the basket no matter what. That's three charges on North Carolina, really trying to get to the rim. And I mean, Boyd is right there and was there for a long time. Yeah. Stayed in there and took that charge. <laughs> Shot clock is off now for the pack. And it led from the opening whistle. More calling out <laughs> Going directions. to 12. tried the back door. North Carolina able to come up with a steal, trying to salvage the last bucket. But it's off the mark. And NC State up 40 to 23 after one half against unbeaten North Carolina. We're going to get you to the studio. Kelsey Riggs leading the way. Pam and Stephanie, thanks. Welcome into this ACC Network Halftime Report. As she said, I'm Kelsey Riggs alongside Chelsea Gray, Kelly Gramlich, and Coach Muffet McGraw. And Kelly, NC State came out dominating in that one. What was the key you think for them in the first half? <laughs> well, NC State just looks absolutely dominant. You're exactly right, Kelsey. I think the rebounding numbers really stand out. NC State has been incredible on the glass. Deja Kelly seems to be the only player that's really embracing the moment and the bright lights of Reynolds in this situation. And I think NC State's depth is showing out. Diamond Johnson has zero points, and NC State is still rolling. They're one of the deepest teams in the country, and it's showing right now, Kels. Yeah, I would agree. NC State started off the game on fire. They played their style, getting the ball into the paint, 
movement, knocking down threes. And on the other hand, you have UNC pushing the pace. It's not been UNC's friend thus far. I think some of the best players and teams have a gauge on when to push and when to slow it down. Many of UNC's possessions seem rushed and leading to NC State being able to score easily in the paint. Yeah, I agree. This NC State team looks like the team we thought they would be. This looks like the Final Four team that they can be. And I think Stephanie mentioned it. It's all about the defense. They brought the energy today on defense. They took three charges in the first half. This is a team that's getting up in passing lanes. Much better defense than I've seen from them all year long. 32 rebounds for NC State so far in the first half to 12 for North Carolina and also 16 points in the paint. We knew that inside presence was going to be a big deal and it looks like it has been so far. We'll see what adjustments they were able to make. It's going really well for NC State. Raina Perez always making it rain. No difference in this one so far. She's got eight points in the first half. Two threes, NC State up at the break. As BC wins 95 to 71. You take a look at the game you're watching right now. First half breakdown. NC State has been dominant so far in the paint, shooting better as well. And North Carolina with a little work to do as they are trailing 40 to 23. So, Kelly, what adjustments do they need to make in the second half? Well, I hope that UNC is able to settle down at halftime. Deja Kelly is the only one that didn't look overwhelmed out there for North Carolina. Early on, especially when NC State comes out of the half, you have to guard the three-point line. Anything else but the three right now for NC State. And you have to find a way collectively to slow down Kunain because they're going to go back to her. But I would love to see just more confidence and poise from UNC in this second half. Yeah, North Carolina, just everybody breathe. Let's relax and see what we got. But Chelsea right. said it at the beginning. Get Kunane in the ball screen. She's not coming out and hedging. She's staying behind. They're going to get some good shots and good looks off that ball screen. Completely agree. I think UNC just needs to settle down, play their game, play off of each other, get some easy shots, maybe get themselves to the free throw line a little bit more so they get a little bit of a rhythm. 17-point game, NC State on top. But as Chelsea said earlier, it is a game of runs, so we will see how North Carolina comes out in the second half. So far, all NC State. Alisa Kunane already has 11. We'll get you out to Pam and Stephanie at Reynolds after this. Welcome back to Reynolds Coliseum. Yes, it is a small gym. That's what Courtney Banghart talked about when she was asked about the sellout there. It's a small, loud gym, and they had had a lot to cheer about, particularly in that first quarter when they led 24-7. Pam Ward along with Steph White. Uh, it was 16 all. The, the, the score was even in the second quarter, but still NC State got out to a big, formidable lead, uh, a lot of it because of their versatile offense. Yeah, it really was. I mean, NC State came out high energy, attack mode right away, sense of urgency, and they really were clicking on all cylinders, establishing Elisa Kunane inside, 16 points in the paint in in the first half, but they knocked it down from the three-point line as well. Six threes, and that is the conundrum that you're in when you're trying to scout an opponent like NC State that has such great balance inside, outside, and uh, so much versatility. When you take a look at the numbers, look at the rebounding advantage, plus 20 for this NC State team. That is a second in rebounding margin in the uh, conference. Elisa Kunan got off to a tremendous start and so far has 11 points and eight rebounds. North Carolina coming in. One of three remaining unbeatens, Arizona and Colorado are the other two. And Wes Moore trying to pick up win number 13 on the season and what would be NC State's 400th win in ACC play. They would be the first team to hit that mark. Duke is at 399 conference wins, but they are not playing until Sunday. Taylor Jones right off the bat. <laughs> I like the ISO. I like the ISO. On the elbow, going to Nusby right away. She's in foul trouble. She's a concern for Wes Moore and just attacked her first play of the second half. Yeah, that's a great point. Usby is out there playing with the three personal fouls. And one of the players that has been lauded for her great work ethic, and there is an offensive foul going to 
come back. There's Usby. Asia Kelly called for her second personal foul. I see State not hanging on the ball, but see North Carolina not taking advantage of the turnover so far. Perez could be dangerous. dangerous. I like that ball movement. I do. That shot didn't go in, but North Carolina icing the screen, not allowing the on-ball screen to happen on the opposite side of the floor, and getting the ball around and getting an open shot was good execution. Kumain, another good defensive play. <laughs> coast, coast to coast. I mean, that's just too easy. It's too easy. Kayla Jones in transition, scoring with the offhand. Usby with the miss from the outside. Second three of the night for Elisa Kunane. Well, you would have to think that Westmore was challenging his team to put together 40 minutes. We need consistency. We need urgency for 40 minutes. We need to show our best basketball. And they have done that for most of the night. Usby this time draws the foul. The ball's coming in transition. You see Kayla Jones with the offhand. Nobody stopped the ball, but we're talking about the power forward, the point forward bringing it down, and Kanane showing again. I can knock down the three-point shot. Kanane only had three threes on the season coming into tonight. Just two for three. Kayla Jones, but Westmore loves her. And there's a little, little mutual admiration society going on right there. She's a player who, uh, since she came in, but as a freshman, she Average less than one point per game and just stuck with it. One of those players that, you know, you got to love. Didn't complain about playing time, just went out there, worked hard, earned her minutes, and has taken advantage of it. Yeah, and then, you know, talking to Westmore about her and just her growth, you know, she was a, a player that he challenged to compete harder when she was younger, to compete more consistently. And now for that to be a staple of, of the character of what kind of player she is, is her motor her energy level, I mean, it really speaks volume to her growth since she's been at NC State. Right, she definitely accepted the challenge and has flourished. Brown Turner couldn't get it, good defensive play, and then Brown Turner with the foul trying to get it back. Todd Williams, who's a good defender, able to get in the way. Well, and again, that's that's not a bad foul if you're Jakia Brown Turner. It, it might not have been, you know, intentional, but at the same time, you stop the break. Right. Carolina is at their best. They can chip away in, in, in their most advantageous way of getting in transition, creating turnovers for scores. And so far, NC State has limited that because they've been dead ball turnovers. Eight fast break points officially for this North Carolina team. Richfield able to come away with it, and they've drawn another offensive foul. Kelly this time hitting the deck. And I think Crutchfield extended the arm. She got the rebound, was looking to try to escape, and extended that arm. Second personal on Crutchfield. by Gage Kelly is put back to back games on the scoring column very well. Poole able to get inside. Only the fourth Tar Heel to score tonight. Poole is really active on the offensive glass and North Carolina is a team who, who really does an exceptional job of being active and aggressive on the offensive boards as well. And again, trying to find ways to get some easy scores, but you got to be able to continue to string some stops together. Cool, nice. Gets the block on the defensive end. Littlefield has really struggled with her shot lately. Has hit just two of her last 22 threes for North Carolina. Usby going right by Kunain, doing the tightrope walk on the baseline, but eventually throws it away. 
Wow, and that's a foul on Todd Williams for trying to knock the ball out. Courtney Banghart says that Todd Williams is one of the very best defenders she's ever coached. Very excited for this opportunity tonight. North Carolina has not led in this game. Now down 20. Well, one of the things that you have to be concerned about, Pam, or you had to be concerned about coming into this ball game was, was the youth of North Carolina. They, they start four sophomores who, who got some experience last year. But you're coming into this environment against a very experienced NC State team. NC State bringing back three starters who took advantage of the extra COVID year in Jones, Perez, and Crutchfield. And then Cunane and Brown Turner bringing experience as well. And, and the only way to get experience is to get experience, right? Got to play, got to have a, an opportunity to play in an environment like this against a skilled team. Got more basketball coming your way Saturday, starting at 4 Eastern, and this is men's basketball. Number two, Duke welcoming in Miami to Cameron Indoor. Coverage of that one starts at 8 Eastern, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Coach K's final season. Twenty-two point advantage for the pack. Nice look over to Perez, but she short-armed it. Shenge, nice to see her back in the game. Shitenge had missed the last couple of games in COVID protocol, number 21 in Carolina Blue. There you go. That's got to feel good for Littlefield. Yeah, no, no question. And Carolina able to get a stop, and Littlefield able to get that drag screen in transition, knock down the pull-up. Littlefield played two years at Princeton for Coach Banghart. Last year, right, because Princeton had the Ivy League did not play at all, so she had, right. had the year and then followed Coach Banghart to Chapel Hill. One of the things that she talked about, Courtney Banghart talked about with Littlefield, is that she just doesn't get too high and she doesn't get too low, right? She's a very even-keeled uh, lead guard, a very even-keeled person. And when you're in this kind of environment with a young team, that's important. To have that complement to the energy and the high motor of all the young players is, is really, really important. And a key to, to why North Carolina is in the position that they're in. Two-time first team All-Ivy, as you see when she was at Princeton. When we come back, we will have a special guest talking about Alyssa Kinane's dra draft stock. Hi, I'm Michelle Vopel, ESPN.com women's basketball writer. And after the break, I'll make the case for why NC State center Elisa Kinnane should be one of the top picks in April's WNBA draft. Stick around. NC State center Elisa Kinnean should be one of the top picks in April's WNBA draft because she's not just a traditional center. She can step outside and even hit the three-pointer. She's shooting over 52% from the field and over 80% from the foul line this season, along with averaging 13.1 points and 7.3 rebounds. She doesn't block a lot of shots, but she's a very good player in a defensive system. Very dependable player also, which is why I think she'll be somebody that a lot of teams that have high picks in the first round will look at in the WNBA draft. Yeah, certainly when you think about Elisa Kunain and her draft stock, all her, of her skill set, you know, her ability to stretch the D, and if she continues to shoot the three with the confidence that she's shooting it in in this ball game, that's going to continue to go higher. Asia Kelly's played really well on the other side for North Carolina. Yeah, she's been terrific and shooting the three. How about two of three tonight? She has another double-double, so 14 points, 10 rebounds. Picked fifth in ESPN's mock draft and doesn't get much better than that. A couple of A minuses and a B plus. Not bad for uh, Kunane. And uh, she does have another year if she wishes to come back. But if she's considered to be a top pick, it's going to be interesting when that decision comes up. 
the defense that time by Kunain. And, and, you know, and we've talked about this. We've covered her a lot. Uh, Kunain can be a little inconsistent. And if you see this kind of, not just effort, but the results tonight, as you said, able to go out, stretch the floor, come out with the, uh, especially the fire in the first quarter when they outscored him 24 to 7. I mean, that uh, her stock is, is just going to keep going up. It is. It, it's, it's just a different urgency, demanding the basketball, a different energy level. You know, sometimes she's out there and she, she's just kind of blending in and playing and then takes what, what her team gives her as opposed to she's established herself early in this ballgame. She established that she was going to be a go-to scorer, and she has that ability. Absolutely. Adams hits one out of two after Boyd Fowler, Lisa Kinane, famously known as Big Smile, a nice kid, does have that smile on her face. And, and Coach Morris talked about it. He, he would prefer it if her nickname was Big Scowl. It would to be just a little, have a little bit more stuff. Yeah, big scowl. I, I, I love that, too. But, you know, again, just the confidence right now that she's playing with, her ability to continue to stretch the D. I mean, it, it, it's big time when, when she is demanding the basketball. How about, and she just hit her third three of the night, now three or four from distance, very close-knit family. Her father, Dan, mom, Sharon, uh, and brother Will come to just about all the games, and there is Dan, uh, I'm Sharon in the back, and they're very close. She's from Summerfield, North Carolina, in the Greensboro area, and uh, Mr. Kunane has uh, been in a wheelchair for several years now, unfortunately, a bicycle accident, and uh, he is at least his biggest fan, and vice versa, but... They are starting to heat up again. They started out hot from three, and they're doing it again here in the third quarter. And that is uh, the other one, the small one, Diamond Johnson, <laughs> her first points. Just a, a delightful uh, transfer out of Rutgers who brings in that big punch off the bench and is content with being the sixth player, not one of the players who would rather start. But you think of all the talent and experience ahead of her. Well, oh, look, I mean, every player wants to start. You know, there, there's no doubt about it. The competitive nature of, 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 of basketball and, and a competitive player that Diamond Johnson is, but everybody returned on this team that made a great run, that's talking Final Four, and she has settled into this role, she's accepted this role, and she gives this team a punch every time she comes off the bench. Second team, all Big Ten, scored 18 points a game at Rutgers last year. She's from Philadelphia, and Coach... Moore says that she is his sixth starter. A little bit of foul trouble early in this game, but just hit a three, and there's a foul. Good aggression again by Destiny Adams, who's heading back to the free throw line for the Heels. Boyd has fouled her twice. Adams, a freshman from Manchester, New Jersey. Coach Banghart has compared her to Dennis Rodman, says this is a player who can guard a four or five, show some versatility on the floor. Some toughness. And Courtney Banghart has a lot of players that can play multiple positions, uh, that can defend multiple positions. I mean, this is a, a North Carolina team that's led the league in three-point field goal percentage defense second in field goal percentage defense. So it's a team that continues to be a, a work in progress, certainly. And the opportunity to, to use this game as a measuring stick, see where are we, where do we need to continue to grow? Where can we expose some weaknesses so that when we go on an ACC play, we're better for it. Getting the toughest test of the season. Crutch field from three. And you mentioned the three-point defense at 23% on the season coming in. Tops in the ACC. One of the best in the nation, but uh, State's lighting it up. That's their 10th three of the evening. Well, we know three-point shooting is a strength of NC State. And uh, again, when you think about it, you have to pick your poison. Are you going to give up interior points and let Kunain go to work, let Boyd go to work, let Jones go to work inside and defend the three-point line? And it's, it's each individual scout coaches scout defense. Clutch field, great defender getting down on the floor to pick it up, and a terrific pass up to Boyd. It's got the people on their feet. They're up 25. 
see some Carolina Blue behind their bench, but they're very, very quiet and very still right about now in a very loud building. Humane with the primal scream after forcing the turnover on the baseline. And, and this is this is the NC State potential. This is what you would have expected to see. The time, the way that they're playing offensively, locking in and being a better defensive team. You know, night in and night out. I think this is the expectation to see this. Westmore was very upfront with us about we have not played our best basketball. We have to get better on defense. We have to come together, play with more urgency, and, and they have responded tonight. Must be with a nice block that time. Westmore, his defense getting it done. It's a two and a half minute drought now for Carolina. They're only shooting 28% for the game, as you see, 35 points, which is, uh, to say the least, well below the 83 points per game. And not just beating people, but beating people by a lot, by 32 points. That's best in the nation in scoring margin. Hodgson able to get the rebound and then the foul on North Carolina. Well, Pam, we talked about early in the ball game the schedule of North Carolina. And Courtney Banghart, you know, schedule, you schedule these games a year in advance. She scheduled based on a team that she knew was going to be a young core finding ways to improve every single day, gaining confidence every single day. And they played some opponents that have, have traditionally been better than what they are right now at this point this season. Uh, and and they've, they've probably been a little bit further along than Courtney Banghart even expected. Yes. So we spoke to her earlier today. She made that point. And the sophomores making that big leap from their freshman year, adding the graduate transfers in Littlefield and Hodgson to help nudge things along. And they're going to try to bleed as much time off the clock as possible. That's Littlefield, the grad transfer, getting it into Usby. Three ball. Hits the bottom of the net. Deja Kelly continues on her scoring spree. But it's NC State with a commanding lead as we head into the fourth quarter. Lisa Kinane has tied a career high with three threes. Her biggest fan, her dad, Dan. That's my girl. about to get underway it's sold out Reynolds Coliseum NC State with a big lead and the next time we will see them is Sunday on the ACC Network at Notre Dame Steph and I will have that game for you part of a quadruple header that day but look at the upcoming ranked opponents it, it's tough they do play Virginia in there but gosh Louisville just destroyed Pitt today and then they finish the month against Carolina yeah I mean this is a tough stretch for NC State and you know no better time than, than now for this team to start to find a rhythm to start to find a little bit more of a consistent identity before you go into this stretch in ACC play. They have dominated in this game. Deja Kelly with the miss. Kelly leading the way with 19 points for North Carolina. The three ball has really hurt them. That time, uh, Jaquia Brown Turner got off to a great start with seven points in the first half. It's not scored in the second half. And a terrific stuff by Boyd. Jada Boyd, the co-sixth player of the year last year, a junior from Petersburg, Virginia. One of that veteran group back for the pack. And this is an NC State team that early in the season was playing without Jada Boyd, was playing without Kayla Jones, really trying to, to figure out rotations, figure out who's going to, to bring the energy, who's going to be the hustle players that do the dirty work like, like they do. And then working them back in and finding rotation has been a challenge for Westmore. 
Yeah, because it's both a luxury and a curse almost, isn't it, to have so many players to choose from? It is. Uh, it is. And then you have young players that you're really excited about that didn't plan on coming to college and having players stay for a quote-unquote COVID year, the super seniors, and, and they're not getting into rotation at, as much. And that's going to tighten up even more now that you're in conference play. It certainly has changed things. Littlefield misses again from three. Just one of seven tonight from the floor. And you see the bench players for NC State. Going out playing time, Kayla Jones has been terrific. Probably going to have to rest her from time to time, keep an eye on that knee. And an opportunity tonight with the big lead to not give her a, a, a minute's load. And she's an essential part of this team. Yeah, it really is a challenge when you have depth like Westmore does to not just keep everyone happy, but you have to build depth because if you have injury situations, health and safety protocol right. situations, you know, you've got to be able to build depth that can compete in conference play, foul trouble, whatever it may be. Johnson, Johnson off the bench again. And the crowd favorites here at NC State. found a little bit of daylight. Kinane comes up with yet another rebound. Boy, working down low. Just a little bit too strong. Rebound taken down by freshman Destiny Adams. That was a nice pass. Must be getting probably her easiest look of the night. She's had to work hard for her 10 points. And there have not been it, it very, there have been very few paint touches and paint looks for North Carolina. Her name took uh, steps, pardon me, before she was able to get rid of the ball. Coming up Saturday night at 10 Eastern. Or tonight at 10 Eastern, pardon me, it's nothing but that. That's next. Look at the group that we have in the studio. They're going to break down everything that's happening in the ACC, right here on the ACC Network, in the ESPN app. Kelly Gramlick, Muffet McGraw, Kelsey Riggs, and Chelsea Gray. The former Duke who has joined our team this year. Glad to have her. The Muffet coming into the game said that she didn't see how North Carolina could stop Elisa Kunane and... Uh, boy, especially the way Kunane came out in that first quarter, a very impressive, plus 17 in scoring, and now Kunane's going to get a rest and a, another chance for big smiles on the bench. <laughs> boy. Uh, what has she done tonight, you ask? Elisa, Elisa Kunane, 19 points, 13 rebounds, and a career-high tie in three threes. Yeah, she's been terrific. They gave her touches early in the ball game. She went to work, and I, I love how she's showing an extended range and shooting that with confidence. But more than anything, her mentality tonight, demanding the basketball, going to work, physicality and toughness has been impressive. Well, Deja Kelly has continued to impress on the other side, has 19 points, but it's had to take 22 shots to get there. And Madison Hayes getting some playing time, Coach Moore getting some of his reserves in. The defense that time by Todd Williams. And another turnover. NC State actually has more turnovers than North Carolina in this game. But they have taken advantage of them with 22 points off the turnovers. And then foul underneath with uh, Zelaya taking the shot. Foul to number 21. 
the season. Lai has got that bandage on that right eye brow uh, back in the first half, took a, 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 a hard foul, an inadvertent elbow that gave a bit of a shiner and a lump on that eye. And you know, we're looking at our storyline, 31 points, the largest margin of victory against North Carolina. And that was way back in 1978. So long ago that that was before it was an NCAA sport. That was when it was the old AIAW days. You're too young to remember that. So that's that's quite a while. It's 100 and they, these teams have played each other a lot. This is their 100, 114th game between these two schools. They've split the meetings in each of the last three seasons. Yes, Johnson did take an extra step or two. Well, and, and Pam, you mentioned NC State's turnovers. They have turned the ball over, but they have not led to North Carolina points. And, and they've all been dead ball turnovers. And you hear coaches talk about it all the time when you're playing a team that likes to push in transition. If we're going to turn it over, it needs to be a dead ball. We've got to be able to set our defense. We cannot fuel their offensive fire with live ball turnovers. Yep, just eight points off of those 17 NC State turnovers. And, and the other thing is the best transition defense is good offensive execution. And NC State has done an outstanding job of executing offensively all night long. 25% is all North Carolina is shooting in this game. Again, one of the most prolific offensive teams, not just in the conference, but in the country coming into this one. And a whole different story. Turner fouled out on the perimeter. So Alyssa Usby is a heck of a basketball player, but she has some other skills as well that Stephanie will break down and we'll come back. <laughs> Before we went to break, we showed you Alyssa Usby, who was juggling basketballs while on a ripstick, which is sort of like a skateboard. Lowest ranked recruit in, in this class last year, second in double doubles in the league, and she has really uh, made her mark on this team, and she has used that. She wasn't even ranked at all in the ESPN W rankings coming in, and she has used that as inspiration and has a whiteboard step uh, to remind herself of, uh, of what she needs to do. I love this. I love this uh, because she uses it as a chip on her shoulder to do the work. You know, not as an excuse, not 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 like, you know, I think every young person needs to see this. There there are there are days it is going to be hard to get to where you want to get to and so many young people want it given to them and this is a kid who took everything to heart who used this as motivation, who fueled her fire, and is now one of the better players on a very good UNC Tar Heel team. And, and Pam, she's, she's going to be an all-league player. I mean, she has all the tools. Yeah, Courtney Bagnard said last year she thought she would be a first-round pick in the WNBA when she gets out of school, and people laughed at her, and now she's like, who's laughing now? And here's what Banghart says. A totally underrated, saw the high-motor, competitive, versatile athlete with great footwork. She says she's a beast, and she knew she could build her up. And Banghart has been pleased with Usby. The way she puts in work in the gym is always working, was doing two-a-days when she was back home in Minnesota, getting up at about 5 in the morning to do that. And that's the kind of work ethic that... that yeah. You can't you can't fake it, right? You no. kind of in a way you get what you put into the game and Usby has really worked hard. There's no question that the, the game re rewards those who, who put in the work. There, there's no question about it. When when you love the game, it loves you back. And there are so many um, players who who say they want to be great, who don't want to do what it takes to be great. And, you know, Usby is one of those players who didn't have the rankings, who didn't have the hoopla, who Courtney Banghart saw, you know, the footwork, the athleticism, the work ethic, the ability to grow. And when you have ability to grow, the only way you grow is by doing the work. And remember, folks, she's only a sophomore. In fact, Banghart first saw her when she was still the head coach at Princeton, was recruiting her to go to Princeton, which tells you what kind of a great student athlete Usby is, and she said she was so relieved when she went into gyms. Coach looked around and didn't see any other coaches, and was like, oh my gosh, I hope I can steal her. And uh, took the job at North Carolina, and Usby came along. 
Good work for Madison Hayes, one of those bench players. This is a transfer from Mississippi State. All freshmen in the SEC last year getting some playing time tonight. Madison Hayes coming off a season high, 11 points in the matchup against Clemson. She's one of those who has been affected by, you know, the super seniors and staying. And she was also affected by, by the early injuries to Kayla Jones and Jada Boyd. Now, Wes Moore sees her playing the three, you know, eventually in, in his program, in his rotation, and she had to play the four this year because of those injuries. And it's a lot for a young player to learn two positions, especially coming into a new program. You see, NC State is just minutes away from becoming the first team to win 400 games in the ACC. Duke has 399. We're supposed to play Georgia Tech tonight. But that game was postponed. Tech is now in COVID protocol. NC State, Duke, and North Carolina all ranked in the top 20, just like the good old days. Yes, sure is. This North Carolina team, this hobby, such a hard worker, gets inside. Usby comes up with the rebound. Usby's line is a double-double. That's going to be more of the norm for her as her career moves along. It's her seventh double-double of the season for us, but yeah, that kind of says it all. <laughs> but he's staying. I like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Even the surgical mask, the mask he has on is Carolina Blue. Johnson just needs a little bit of space. So what does North Carolina do you think? What do you get from this game as they move forward? Gosh, they have Virginia Tech next. Well, you know, first and foremost, I think you have to have a short-term memory. You, you knew you were going to be coming into a tough environment. They did not respond to start the ball game. You know, but, but if you look at the runs, go back to the runs that NC State made. Did it have to do with us not executing scout defense? Did it have to do with us not being able to handle the environment? You know, what caused these runs? Because outside of the run in the first and outside of the run in the third, North Carolina played them pretty well. And they're not playing their best basketball here tonight. So you look at those, you get better, you go back to work. And as Courtney Banghart says, we put one foot in front of the other. That's how we got here. And that's how we'll continue to move forward. It is indeed a building process. Just her third season in charge of Carolina was able to get them into the NCAA tournament last year. And ironically, I don't know if that's the right word, they needed the win against NC yeah. State to get in. And they upset a top 10 NC State team to get in to the NCAA tournament. Usby does a good job of drawing contact back at the line. And, and you're really leaning on a young core, a young core who has take, taken a huge step forward, starting four sophomores. Those sophomores average 50 points a ball game, 50 of their 83. So continue to move the needle. You don't, there's no substitute for this kind of in-game experience. Good defensive play by Usby on this end now. And, and that big leap, right, is about 20 points more per game for that mm -hmm. group than last year. Like you mentioned early in the game that Janelle Bailey graduated. She was the big force inside who had drawn the defensive assignment on Kumain in years past. We haven't even mentioned Stephanie Watts, who was right. you know, a top pick in the draft WNBA pick. draft. Things definitely on the up and up for this North Carolina team, even though the score tonight does not show it. Team pick to finish seventh in the ACC, about to fall for the first time this season. Only shooting 24% now, their previous season low was 34% in a win against the University of Washington. And they are, came up against an NC State team that came out like gangbusters, outscored them 24 to seven in the first quarter, and that was kind of all she wrote. Only outscored them by seven since then, but it was really too high of a mountain to climb for this young Carolina team. It is. There's a small margin for error. I mean, NC State is an extremely efficient offensive team. And there's a small margin for error. And, and if you're Wes Moore, you take this film and you say, you know what, this is our potential. This is how we should play day in and day out. Let's replicate this. Let's build our consistency. One minute remaining. Under a minute to go. There's a nice end to end. And Lisa Kuhay makes the I love it when the starters are <laughs> cheering. That's uh, Asia James getting a 
getting a little bit of playing time. Freshman from Virginia Beach. And the fans are on their feet at Reynolds. Sold out in this small, intimate, loud as heck gym. <laughs> See, you, you're continuing to try to uh, to push that narrative. It's what you want in a rivalry matchup, right, right Exactly. Though? It's what and, you and want. The coach bang box defense, she did say that Carmichael was small too. But you know, you, 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 get, you get these sound bites now and, mm -hmm. and you run with it. And the attack. It's Timmons, another talented freshman, Jessica Timmons, who is uh, sitting behind a lot of veterans on this team, getting the bucket. Now charge to number 23, Jessica Timmons. Timmons second. Asia Kepler on the line for UNC. Kelly, another 20-point game coming off the season and career-high 31 against Clemson. Very talented player for North Carolina. But NC State, too much from the get-go. Right. They were outstanding tonight, yeah. certainly offensively, the balance, the execution. They were terrific. And they hold North Carolina to a season well and scoring less more gets the wave over to Coach Banghart. They will play again in Chapel Hill on January the 30th. But tonight, you know, Coach Moore told us he's got a, a red and black convertible <laughs> Corvette. And he said, I'm not going to drive a blue car. He's got that car. And, that, and everything was humming. He says he's happier driving it after a win. I think he's going to have a really happy drive after this <laughs> He one. sure is. So... NC State wins it 72 to 45. Double doubles for Alyssa Usby for, N for North Carolina and for NC State. Alisa Cunane, 19 points and 13 rebounds. NC State led from the opening tip and they have won for the 13th time this season. They get ready to move on. A couple of tough ones on the way. Virginia Tech at home, and then they go to Notre Dame. That's for uh, North Carolina. NC State has Notre Dame next on the road on Sunday. We will see you at 2 mm -hmm. Eastern time for that contest. It's got to be extra special. Not only do you win going away, but you beat them. <laughs> yeah, you beat the rival. You beat the rival. You get ready to go on the road to another ranked opponent. Bottle that up and take it with you. And Courtney Banghart said she had no idea what the... She knew about the Duke-Carolina rivalry, but she said she had no idea that NC State of North Carolina was just as heated until she got to Chapel Hill. Congratulations to Coach Moore and to the great program at NC State. It's the immortal K. Yao did yes. such wonderful things to uh, pile up many of those wins. Jada Boyd waves to the camera. 400th ACC win, the most of any program in the history of this great conference. And Lisa Cunane, Steph White, was getting it done and, and did it really from the very beginning. She did. She wanted the ball early. She was aggressive when she got it. Second possession down the floor. She gets this move inside. And she was just demonstrative. She was aggressive. She was versatile. She showed you her entire skill set. I love her stepping outside, knocking down these threes. She was terrific on the boards as well. It is what an MVP type all ACC player does. And it was a great night. Elisa Cunane joins us. Uh, congratulations, Elisa. What was your mindset coming out? It seemed like you were in a, a different gear tonight. Yeah, you know, I was really just excited to play tonight. Um, first game of the new year and to get out here in a rivalry game against in our home court in a sold out crowd. Uh, just an amazing environment to come out and play in. Uh, Elisa, your team was really clicking on all cylinders offensively. What was working well for you guys? Uh, I think we were just trying to play good defense uh, and let us get that out in transition. And we were just hitting shots from the perimeter tonight. Yeah, and Coach Moore had talked about just wanting more sense of urgency from your team, particularly on the defensive end of the floor. Do you think you gave it to him tonight? 
Uh, yeah, I think so. I think we might have struggled a little bit in the beginning, uh, but then we got back out, and that was just really our focus. And uh, you, you had a, a couple of shots of your dad, Dan, up in the, up in the stands, uh, your biggest fan. What's, the, what's that mean to you, you have your dad up there cheering for you? Uh, it's amazing. Uh, I'm glad they can come to Reynolds and watch the games. And my mom and dad are just fired up for this game against UNC, uh, so I'm glad we gave them a good show. Maybe more fired up even than you, huh? And you hit three threes tonight. How about that? Showing some range, Elisa. I know. It felt great. <laughs> All right. Elisa Kinane, congratulations. Thank you so much. And we'll see you against Notre Dame on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Great job. We saw the good smile. NC State with an impressive 72-45 to 45 win over North Carolina. For Steph White, I'm Pam Ford. Welcome into Nothing But Net alongside Chelsea Gray, Kelly Gramlich, and our two-time national champion Hall of Fame coach who, when she talks, all of college basketball listens, Muffet McGraw. I'm Kelsey Riggs. Great to be with you tonight. <laughs> we had a top 20 matchup on ACC Network, NC State and North Carolina going head-to-head. -head. And Kelly, NC State dominated in this game. Did we learn more about NC State or North Carolina? Unfortunately, I think we learned more about North Carolina. This is the first ranked team they've played all year. They struggled. I thought the, the lights were a little too bright in this game for North Carolina, and they still didn't know how to guard Cunane inside. They really missed Janelle Bailey. Cunane was dominant. This is what NC State does. They're really, really good. I think we learned a little more about North Carolina. They're still trying to grow up some of those young players. Let's talk about how it all went down because these two teams meeting as ranked opponents for the first time since February of 2014. North Carolina number 19, NC State number five midway through the first quarter. NC State already up eight. Alisa Kunane Kelly, you just mentioned her, gets the job done. Wolfpack start things off on a 10-0 run. Later in the first, NC State up 12. Kunane with a great move there finishes with the left hand. NC State up 19 to 5. Then on the other end, moving the ball, check out Raina Perez. Can't leave her wide open. She will make it rain. She does there. Hits the three. NC State up 24 to 7. And then later in the second quarter, NC State up 13. Kunane sets the pick for Kayla Jones. She gets the layup. NC State up 15 to the third quarter. 21-point lead. Of course, more from Kunane. Drops it in. NC State wins 72-45. to Here's Kunane after the game with Pam Ward and Stephanie White. Elisa Kunane seemed to be fired up too. Chels finished with 19 points, 13 rebounds, and a big win for them. What was it about her game that impressed you the most, Chelsea? I think her ability to score on different levels, like she's extended her range, able to step out, hit some threes, able to get into the paint. You know, she showed glimpses of great footwork, doing up and under moves, being able to attack the glass. So she was all over the hills tonight and they had no answer for her. I like the way they established the inside game right off the bat. I think it went into Kunane. She did a great job. You know she's going to rebound, but today they were leaving her open on the three-point line. She's proven that she can shoot the ball. That was a mistake, and she really made him pay. Coach, way to play through the adversity there as the earring just flies off. Kelly, <laughs> NC State didn't have to play through any adversity early on. They came out swinging, and it looked like a really motivated team. Were you at all surprised by how this game started, Kelly? First of all, I'm not surprised with Coach's <laughs> perseverance, okay? She's going to make it happen. Earrings flying, headsets, whatever, it's going to happen. But, you know, I, I, I was a little surprised. I thought this game was going to be a bit closer. Now, Kunane and how dominant she was early was really the story. They couldn't guard her. We've talked about how Janelle death. Bailey the last couple of years has had Kunane's number, and she's been able to be really physical with her. I thought Anya Poole would be able to put up a little more of a fight inside, but they really miss Janelle Bailey. And look, y'all, if Kunane is knocking down threes at that kind of rate, you see on my little whiteboard here, uh, if she makes – I pointed the wrong way. If she makes three threes on a given night, that's not fair. If Kunane can now shoot the three, extending her range, like Chelsea said, that's just a whole new dimension of her game. 
man, don't you just love ACC basketball? There's just so many different rivalries. UNC went right down the road to the small arena and found out what it meant to play against a seasoned and veteran group. UNC knows Duke's knows Duke is their rival, but NC State has bragging rights throughout North Carolina right now. And NC State came into this game and imposed their style of play on UNC. 72 to 45 win. They were dominant from the start. It is actually NC State's 400th ACC win in 45 years. So, Coach, when you think about the, the dominance, especially lately, and the program that Westmore has been building there, it's pretty impressive what he's been able to sustain. He really has. He's done a fabulous job with the recruiting and then getting transfers to come in, mixing the pieces together and finding that great chemistry. And tonight they really showed that they had a great chemistry on defense. I think West is one of the best coaches in the league. He's done a fabulous job and also one of the best coaches in the country. We talked about this on our production meeting earlier today about this rivalry with NC State and UNC. And of course it's a rivalry and you bring in Duke and the triangle has three top 20 teams. But I said, look, I think NC State's a little more worried about Louisville right now. The top dog in the ACC, NC State is. They want to beat UNC, they want to beat Duke, but they have their eyes on the final four. And I thought you saw that mindset from NC State tonight. We'll see. Can they sweep the triangle teams this year? I think that's going to be a really fun storyline to watch. Undefeated still so far in conference play. And now we will send it back out to site with Pam Ward and Stephanie White and Wes Moore, NC State's head coach. Let's hear what he had to say. NC State has given North Carolina its first loss of the season, a convincing victory, 72 to 45. And uh, Wes Moore, the head coach for the Wolfpack, Joining us now, and uh, you talked to us earlier about wanting to see a, a great effort and intensity from your team. I think we saw that tonight. What, yeah, what's your I'm real pleased. You know, we we haven't been real satisfied with our defense. I've been hard on them this week. It's been a rough week, to be honest with you. Uh, but you know what? They came out here tonight, and they really got after it and uh, did a heck of a job. So I'm proud of them. Effort was great. And uh, like I said, we – you know, defensively, uh, most of the game on the boards, we did a good job, let up a little bit there late in the game. But, uh, again, love our effort and our energy and intensity. Coach, you had the urgency and intensity, but things were also clicking offensively yeah. for you. What did you like? Well, Lisa Kinane, uh, you know, I love, you know, 19 <laughs> points, 13 rebounds. Uh, that's a Lisa Kinane, you know. So we uh, were able to get her some touches. I thought we also got our uh, forwards involved, uh, Kayla Jones, Jada Boyd. Thought they did a nice job of making things happen early, attacking the rim, attacking the boards. Uh, but just really everybody did a great job, and it was a good team win. And I thought Elisa really established herself early and, and, and just wanted the basketball. Um, what do you need from her consistently that, that she can do that? Well, first of all, I got to make sure I keep up with her minutes and keep her out there enough. Uh, you know, uh, we at Clemson, I kind of uh, lost track of it a little bit. We had a little bit of a lead, not lost track of her, but we got to keep her out there some. I think she only played 14 minutes in that game. So got to get her on the court. Got to keep her out of foul trouble. She made, you know, for the most part, made good decisions tonight. So that's good. Uh, and we got to get her the ball. You know, there's times we come down and jack up shots early in the possession. We want to work inside out. We want to get a touch on there on the block. And then when the defense collapse, helps, whatever, kick it back out. And then we knock down the three. So got to have that, uh, get her some touches and work inside out. And of course, it doesn't get any easier going no. the road to play uh, Notre Dame yeah. next. But uh, is, I would, is this the kind of uh, effort that, that you can move yeah. forward, especially yeah. going into South Bend? Yeah, it's a good start, you know, defensively. You know, Notre Dame probably has as much young talent uh, or more than anybody in the conference. You know, their roster is full of kids that, that we tried to recruit. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, being a Baptist hurt us. I don't know. But, you know, uh, they've got some great young players there. It's going to be a big challenge, especially after an emotional game tonight. But, uh, you know, we'll get recovered a little bit tomorrow and, and get ready to go up there and play a great Notre Dame team. Okay, uh, Coach Westmore, thanks for your time. Great effort tonight. You. We'll uh, see you in South Bend. Thanks. Thanks so much. Appreciate you all. That game against Notre Dame coming your way Sunday, 2 o'clock on ACC Network. Let's take a look at the other side of things, though, because North Carolina came into this game, one of the teams that's hot in the ACC, but they had a rough night tonight, Chelsea. Their points, their field goal percentage, 
free throws as well tied for some of their season worst and the season worst overall in shooting. So when you look at this, Chels, is this they played such a good opponent or they just couldn't get things going on their end as well? I think it's a mixture of both. UNC needed this game to understand what they need to improve on. And for me, learning how to execute offensively, set screens, and understanding the pace is going to be huge for UNC. They were able to see, you know, what holes they have in their defense, but I really believe offensively they need to focus on that a little bit more. I think Usby's got to step up and do a little bit more. You saw Deja Kelly trying to step up. She wasn't very efficient offensively. She scored some points, but shot the ball poorly, as, as did everyone else. I think they've got to look at their execution. Did they get the shot they wanted? That was the biggest key for me. Were they setting the right screens, moving to the right spots, and getting what they wanted? I don't think they did tonight. Just seven points for North Carolina in both the first quarter and the final quarter. Kelly, they finished that on a seven-minute non-scoring streak. That's how the game finished for North Carolina. But Coach mentioned Deja Kelly and what she was able to do. 21 points. Kelly, she is certainly a bright spot for them. I think she's one of the most improved players in the ACC. It's probably going to come down to her and Jewel Spear for that award. And these are two sophomores that have taken their games to another level. And she looked like the player that was really taking the brunt of the offense on for them. And she didn't look afraid of the bright lights. I thought at times, again, Coach Banghart has talked about how this team is young. I thought at times the moment seemed a little too big for them, but not for Deja Kelly. And speaking of size, I also thought UNC looked a little small. They play a four-guard lineup, but against a team like NC State with their size in the front court, it can be difficult. They weren't able to utilize their speed in some spots either. But Deja Kelly, definitely a bright spot for the Tar Heels. For the last seven times these two teams have played, they have gone back and forth between who wins. We will see what happens next time they play this season. That game coming your way on January 30th. Let's